Hey guys, today we are going to go over the most expensive cards in Standard, maybe some cards to pick up, maybe some cards to sell. So we're going to talk about them in strictly terms of MTG Finance, ups, downs, sideways, and I'm going to probably dedicate Saturday and Sunday, it is now 2 a.m. on a Saturday, to MTG Finance videos. I do want to continue to make them. I know we have digressed a little bit, but I'm thinking having a schedule will help. So Friday, we'll open a product to eventually give away the best card. And Saturday, Sunday, we'll just talk about MTG Finance news. So not everyone has to deal with the drama. If you don't like that, you can only watch on weekends. If you like the drama and you don't like the MTG Finance, then you don't need to watch during the weekends. And then Friday, if you guys like pack openings, you can watch pack openings on Friday. I am taking it more seriously than I have before. I uh, mainly because, you know, I make, I'm making the decision, yes, I do want to grow the channel. Uh, before, I was, you know, I've mentioned this a few times before, being a small channel, in my opinion, is better than being a mid-sized channel. Like, being a big channel, I assume, is great, uh, 100k or more. Being a small channel, I would say a 1,000 or less, is also great because you can really be, you're not criticized as heavily as, a, you know, this middle size channel. So I'm criticized probably as much as a big channel, but obviously it's not the same. So anyway, uh, Ixlon. Oh, we, we skipped uh, Rivals of Ixlon. Hopefully you guys, you can go back and pause the video. So Ixlon, we have Carnage Tyrant. Um, it's only a matter of time before they reprint him. How do I know he's a mythic dinosaur? I know this card's going to be reprinted sometime soon. He has slightly gone up. Search for Azkanta. This card is very, very good. And it will drop after rotation because all pretty much all cards do with very few exceptions because right now it's being played in modern and it's being played in standard. So if it loses demand in one area, it will drop, even though it's still played in modern. So Vraska's Contempt. This would have been such a great speculation. It was a few dollars when it first came out. Now it's the one of the most expensive cards. And Vraska Relic Seeker. Good playing to Walker. Uh, definitely, I would rather prefer that one over the other one. Who t I think Hoot Lee is in this set. All right, next one is Hour of Devastation. So I have some really bad news for everyone who thought this was a powerful set, which I said it was not, but then they argued with me. This set is one of the ma the worst disasters I've seen. It is the Dragon Maze set, and it sucks. So Scarab God is the only card over $10, so for $32.99. But you know what? I guarantee you it's going to happen because it happened to Voice of Resurgence. It will, the one card of any value will be reprinted in a random master set. And then your expected value goes down a ton. Okay, let me put it this way. Let's say you pay a hundred let's say you pay eighty ninety dollars a box at your local game store. What scenario do you think of combination of cards do you think you can get over ninety dollars? Retail. I'm not even talking about like buy listing it out, which is a headache what scenario would that be possible like what would we need to pull we'd probably need to pull a foil scarab god is that the only out we have i don't like that i don't like uneven spreads it makes box openings very bad especially if you only buying one box now you might say oh well of course our devastation also has the masterpieces duh that's where the value no this is absolutely, it's like, I think the masterpiece, the whole lottery system they put in place makes no sense to me because it's literally a lottery. I don't think you want to open packs, you know, there's gambling and then there's recklessly gamble. So there's playing poker and blackjack and do, being smart about it. And then there's, you know, let's bet what is this next card going to be black or red, right? 
so that's 50 50 here we're talking about like one and two in a case one in the case the odds are very stacked against you this is a lottery ticket all right i'm a cat how did hazret do uh she has been dropping in price at the 17 dollar mark i think she has a lot more room to drop i think she will i think she will plummet during rotation like absolutely plummet so what in Amarquette is actually valuable? Nothing is the answer. You have Hazret, which was reprinted, and then the next card is Gideon, which is just $10. As for Toad, is not supposed to be $9. That's not $9 good. Anointed Procession, that's the only one I could see actually going up in price. Everything else, especially at rotation, none of this is playable in modern. Uh, none of this is very good. Maybe the, the land, lands are kind of nice, but lands are always lands, right? All right, invocations. Force of Will still doing well. Uh, Dot C is doing well. Blood Moon doing well. Damnation doing well. Scare of God doing well as the EDH commander, of course. I like them. I mean, they, they held price. I didn't think they would hold price so strong, but they did, and they proved me wrong, and I will admit that I didn't think these would be as valuable today as they are. I think they have long-term hold, as long as they do not keep reprinting these. Like, not reprinting, but like, they're unique. They're unique items, very difficult to sell, though. Have you ever tried to trade one of these away? They're very difficult to do that for any like reasonable value, right? For a card of similar value, you can always trade down. Trading down is super easy, and I almost never do it. I either, either trade even or I try to trade up, and I'm willing to sacrifice some value on my end. So here's what I mean. Force of Will is a $168 card. You can easily trade it for about for 10 cards worth $20 each. People will do that. But the buy list of Force of Will is going to be higher than the buy list of those 10 cards when you add them together. Therefore, I would rather have the Force of Will. Now, would someone trade Force of Will for a dual land? No. Of equal value? No. For a one-to-one -one trade. So that's the problem. All right, A for Revolt, we have Walking Ballista. <laughs> I mean... Fatal Plus, which is an uncommon and the only saving grace of this entire set, to be honest, is the third most valuable card in a set with Mythics Galore. I think these are... I don't even see any Mythics. Is there really no Mythic in Aether Revolt? More than $10? I think... Is Paradox Engine a Mythic? I think it is. Walking Ballista is not. Fatal Push not, Mimic is not, Disallow is not, Heroic Intervention. I think that's a green one, is not. So, mm, I don't know if these price... Is it true? Can this be possible? This is the first time I'm seeing this. In A for Revolt, there's not a Mythic worth more than any of these cards. Well, I mean, besides Paradox Engine, which I'm assuming is a Mythic. There's not a Mythic worth more than $5. Seriously. Wow. I mean, wow. So if you want to know if standard is healthy, if magic is healthy, you look at the prices. The prices dictate whether or not our game is healthy or not. Um, you might look at, you know, statistics like how many women are in magic or, you know, how many um, younger players are in magic. There, there's other statistics you look at, which would be helpful. But the main one is what our price is doing. Uh, Chandra, Torch of Divines, and one deck, they annihilate, and I mean, Chandra will still fall. I have no doubt she'll be below 20 soon. And one Challenger deck, they annihilated the value of two different, totally different sets, which are still the most valuable card in the set. So it's these 25 from, it looks like, about $30 only a month ago. Torrential Gear Hulk is at 12. Uh, Botanic Sanctum, which is the fast land. The fast lands are good. I like the fast lands. And so it's basically Chandra, Gear Hulk, and then four, I'm assuming the fifth fetch, the fifth fetch land is below. 
and no other card worth over five dollars including rares and mythics um yikes yikes um okay i don't want to be super negative so i'm going to tell you what products to buy i'm going to take a brief aside conspiracy take the crown is very good i've opened a lot of it um uh, i've opened otter on i've opened another leovolt i've opened a foil marcella in the same box as the leovolt you can't get you can't not the expected value is not that bad like it's okay and you can get it for under. I got my boxes for 67 shipped to me. I don't remember if I got free items that day, but normally they come with like free random bulk items. $67, you cannot go wrong with a box um, of conspiracy. Like there's almost no way given the uncommons. So you gotta look at the uncommons. You gotta look at the Mox Opal. Like if I told you one box that I would buy at 90 and these boxes are sitting at 90 right now with free shipping, that is not conspiracy, it would be Caldas. It would be Caldas. Because when you are in a lottery ticket, the bigger the lottery winnings, the potential, I mean, okay, so Mox Opal is $375. It is worth tw more than twice the Force of Will which is the best card of that set. And you still have Soul Ring, which is over 226, which is over Force of Will. You have five cards, Chalice of the Void, which recently is going up. Okay, that's weird, but okay. You have five cards worth more than the Force of Will, which is not a bad card. That's definitely 168 is a fantastic card. If you pull one from your box, you get more. But if you pull a Mox Opal, you get your whole case, pretty much. You make your whole case back. I love it. So, Kaladesh, Conspiracy, Take the Crown. I'm looking to buy heavy Kaladesh. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't have any right now. But I'm looking into it because just because of Mox Opal and those five inventions I went over. They are beautiful. And I don't see them going down in price, even the reprint. So, even Chalice of the Void, it was a lot... Mm, I don't remember what the original price when it came out was. But I think it was one of the more expensive ones. Anyway, that is it. Leave me a comment below, uh, especially if you like MTG Finance videos and you like... It's, it's you know, okay, Monday through Thursdays, I'll do something drama-related. And then Fridays, I'll do a box opening. Uh, and I am looking for interesting products to open. So if you guys have links to, like, products that you want me to buy to open, at good prices, of course, I will buy them. Um, and I am looking for, let's say, what else should I look at? Lots of cool stuff. Anyway, bye guys.